Hello everyone, this is Callie and welcome to a new Best Of Games video. Today we're going to be looking at the top 6 games, in my opinion, that have come out thus far in 2020. Again, this is my opinion, you may disagree, but let's get started. Clearly, as you can see on the screen, number 6, we are looking at Dragon Ball Z Kakarot today, which is out on several different systems. You can get it for PS4, Xbox One, and PC. Now this game follows the Dragon Ball Z saga basically from beginning to end. And it has lots of great features that, you know, everyone that loves the series would love to see in previous games. Uh, it's, it's really good combat, has lots of level up options, different skills, lots of different characters that you can use. I personally didn't play this game myself, but my husband spent hours upon hours in front of the TV, absolutely just loving this game. And he's not a fan of most games, so to him it's, it's huge that you know, I really loved the game this much. So since I saw so much of it being played from a, you know, a third person perspective, a second party, etc., I didn't feel the need to play it again. But it's just really amazing looking combat. It's fluid, you can fly through the open world. Lots of uh, unique mechanics that they try to do back in DBZ sagas that didn't go over that well. Um, but they've never made a Dragon Ball game like this. And I wish they would do this with other anime series, like, I don't know, they did some games with Naruto. We'd like to see more of those. Uh, let's do some. Bleach games like this, or some other major animes like My Hero. Oh, My Hero Academia would be amazing in this style. Maybe we'll get that someday. So, you know, I'm a big Dragon Ball fan, but we can't just talk about Dragon Ball all day long. So, let's kick it up a notch to a game that a lot of you probably haven't seen or played yet, and that's Darksiders. Genesis. So this game is out on PS4, Switch, Xbox One, PC, and even Stadia. You can buy it. If you like Diablo 2 and you like flashy, exciting action games, you're gonna like this. The story doesn't get in the way too much, so it's not really similar to the other Darksider games. But if you like the Diablo style games, you're gonna love this one. Definitely give it a shot. Number five, we have. Darksiders Genesis. Now, for a big one, for all the RPG fans out there, we got Ease Memories of Celsetta on the PS4 this year. It's really great. It was delayed a little bit, but now it's out. You can pick it up uh, on the PS4, obviously. It was also available on the Vita previously, and you can also get it on PC. So, Memories of Celsetta, as you can see on the screen, has a much more 3D art style, uh, much closer to E7, uh, not quite as high quality graphics as E8, but still, it's a great game. A lot of people uh, appraise this as one of the better E games overall, so if you're looking for an entry point in the series, this may be a good place for you to start. Uh, this or E8, they're really great games that are severely underrated. Um, I know those of you that watch Eric Landon's videos, you'll know he's a very big, big fan of the Ease series. So, if you're thinking about getting into a good action RPG that has lots of smooth combat, a decent story, that uh, still has some, you know, some anime inspirations, this may be a good place for you to start. It's fast-paced, and really, I think you'll enjoy it. So, definitely give it a shot. So this next video is going to come to no surprise if you know much about my channel and my likes in games. And that's Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition in a number three. So, Xenoblade Chronicles X was my favorite of the series. But this game had a very good story. Uh, I don't know if it was the best story 
but it was it was unique. I didn't expect the twists that occurred uh, near the end of the game, which uh, linked first and second game together, which is great. So if you want to see more about the Xenoblade series, I made another video on my channel about that, so check it out. Uh, Xenoblade, it's 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 open world personified. I mean, it's it's just a massive open world. You're living on these two titans. Uh, you live on the Bionis, and you know you're going to defend your family from the Mechon invasion. Uh, it's just hard to believe that you know that the people live on these gigantic, massive titans, the shells of the titans anyway. But there's the land is war ravaged. It's definitely a type of game that doesn't come around very often. It plays kind of like an MMO style, but also not at the same time. And you can do a lot of walking. Uh, so if, if you're a fan of Death Stranding, like I was, it's another walking simulator. It really is. You walk uh, through different fields and pick up little things, and you, you walk a lot between areas. Now there is fast travel that's needed. It's a very large world. I couldn't imagine just walking everywhere in the game without having that. Um, there's different arts you can have. There's affinity trees. There's tons of side quests. Over 400 side quests. And there's also an addition to the story that wasn't available in the Wii and the 3DS version. So, here's a bit about some of the characters. Fiora. It's Shulk's, Shulk's childhood friend. Uh, definitely one of the key characters in the story. Rhine. Everyone knows it's Rhine time, always. Sharla, uh, who is your healer of the group. Really, Ricky, hero pawn. Not the best hero pawn. It's debatable. I know some people think Ricky's the best, but I'm a, I'm a bigger fan of Tatsu myself. Tatsu is hero pawn. So, if you're looking into get an open world game, it's just massive and full of life and tons of side quests, a unique story that you don't see every day. This is really the place for you. Uh, with this, along with the expansion, you can be looking at around 60-80 hours for some people that complete everything. It's close to 150-200. But with most side quests, you could do the whole thing in around 70 with the expansion that they added. So, I highly recommend this game. Give it a shot if you have a Switch. It's... it's good. Just go play it. Just stop listening to me talk about it and go play Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition. So now we're up to number two. Don't want to have too many spoilers for this game. Because they didn't follow it exactly like the original. And that frustrated a lot of people, but... Final Fantasy VII Remake was absolutely phenomenal in my opinion. I took off work for this game, and that weekend, just like a blur, <laughs> it's, I beat the whole thing in one weekend, and I feel like I went into a time vortex to where I uh, started, and then I went back to work, I'm like, what, what happened the last few days? It's amazing. So if you're a fan of the original, you're okay with the combat changes, the fleshing out they did of the world, it's just absolutely, I loved it. There were some parts that drug on, uh, there were some side quests that weren't perfect, but overall, top-notch job. I love the storytelling changes at the end, super unique. Uh, purist of the original, may get a bit turned off by that, but uh, I like what Tetsuya Nomura is doing to move the series forward. I, I hope they correct some things in the combat a bit during the next version, but it's still very good. Give this game a shot if you have a PS4, this is a PS4 exclusive. Number two, we have Final Fantasy VII Remake. But the number one game. The number one game of the year. I don't think there's going to be a game that beats it. I don't know if there's going to be a game, even the first year of PS5, that will beat this series. Ori and the Will of the Wisps. I don't know if there's been a better sequel to a game made. They, they took all of the things that were great about the first Ori and added so much. The world is bigger, it's more fleshed out, there's more to do, there's more skills. All the puzzles and all the... just... 
minus a couple of bugs that existed, this game is just amazing. It's probably the greatest Metroidvania series, Ori in the Blind Forest and Ori in the Will of the Wisps, that have ever been made. I, I truly don't think that there's going to be a company to beat these. For me, I absolutely love the Ori series. It's out on Xbox One and PC. Um, I, again, it's another one where I took off work so I could play this. It wasn't as long of a game as Final Fantasy, of course, only clocking in around 15 hours, but God, it's just so absolutely amazing. So if you've ever considered playing games like this, if you like Metroidvanias, you absolutely have to play this series. It's amazing. The story, the artwork, the fluidity of the combat, the movement, everything. It's just amazing. So that is my top six games of the year so far. Thank you guys for watching. Really appreciate it. So make sure to like if you like the video, subscribe, and share with your friends. I truly hope you guys like this video. I'm gonna be working on more like this in the future. Uh, so thank you guys very much for your time. Stay safe out there, and keep on keeping on.